Welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ, and we are at the Tokyo Game Show that it was uh, that's happening this weekend, as a matter of fact. And we're going to be taking a look at all sorts of stuff, as you can see on screen. There's more than just video games, but we're mainly going to focus on the games. And I just want to give a thank you for uh, for everybody involved in getting me this footage. I'll be at the show on Sunday, and we're going to start here with Wulong by Koei Tecmo. Now this game looks freaking awesome, and judging by uh, what we're seeing here on screen. It's heavily inspired by From Software's uh, Souls games, Elden Ring, and I love seeing all these uh, these clones because you just you just this is where like the the good stuff happens. We get more of what we what we like, and this one doesn't seem to uh, disappoint. I imagine that the queue, the the waiting time to play this is actually rather high, because this was really like the only game based off looking at the footage that was kind of like this, apart from a few indie games. But those are usually on a 2D plane type of, type of deal. But this looks freaking awesome, and um, it's gonna be available for PlayStation 5, uh, Series X, as well as previous generation platforms, and of course, uh, the PC. So definitely looking forward to this one. I hope they release a demo of it, of the game pretty soon, because I do wanna play it. And based off the mythology, it seems to be mythology based out of uh, China, I could be wrong. But that's just kind of the, the vibes that I'm getting. But freaking cool, this one. And there we go. Wulong, Fallen Dynasty. And then this is uh, something else that they had uh, at the Koei Tecmo um, booth. And these things appeared to be life-size. And then we're going to make our way into the Sega booth. Look at that freaking huge Sonic. Lots of people. So... Um, this this event hasn't occurred in the last two years, so you know I'm sure there's a lot of people that are eager to come out here. And this looks like a place where you can have your photograph taken, and it looks like you can pick up one of the rings there. Definitely looking forward to this Sonic Frontier as well, as it seems to be um, kind of taking the series in a different direction, you know, open world. So definitely looking forward to that. But look at the size of this thing, this little blow up uh, plushy thingy of Sonic. It's freaking huge. And then here we have some off-screen uh, footage of the game running. And I'm not sure what platform this is uh, running off of, but from my understanding, it's going to be available on all major platforms. And yeah, looking forward to this one. I wonder how long this, is, this thing is going to be, you know, since it's open world, there's a lot to discover, a lot to see. And then here we have, I believe this is Yakuza, the next entry, and we have a couple booth babes here. And everybody's just kind of lining to get the to get the photo, video, all that good stuff. And then we have Virtual Fighter, the eSports edition. I'm glad that they're kind of bringing this series back because it's one of my favorite um, 3D fighters of all time. I freaking love that game. And then on the Atlas side of the Sega booth, we have, of course, all things Persona. And we have, what, Persona 4 Golden, 5, and then Part 3. We have kind of like the little... Um, I guess the demons that are the main demons here that are kind of like the poster boys for each of the games. And this is pretty much coming out for everything under the sun from Xbox, PlayStation, Switch. It's all coming. And this is always fun to see, like, uh, the little mascot there. I forget the, the name of that character, but this is uh, from Persona 5. It's a game that I, that I have on the PlayStation 3, but I just kind of uh, forgot about it. But I definitely need to get back into it. And then here we have the Square Enix. Now this is a new Final Fantasy something in entry, and then this is like a uh, I forget the name of that of this game, but this is just kind of like the life size wardrobe, which is actually pretty cool. Look at all this uh, hardcore fashionistas, but it's always nice to see stuff like this. And then uh, Forspoken is the name of that game, and then we have the Konami booth, but. You know, in looking at the footage, it doesn't seem like anything um, anything that really calls out to my attention apart from this, Super Bomberman R2. I haven't played the first one, but I heard a lot of great things about it. And it's getting a sequel, it seems. As well as, I believe they announced a few remasters, and I'm pretty sure they'll, annou they'll announce more. And then we have, like, uh, Valve's Steam Deck. Now, this is an area where you can kind of preview the machine. And then next to that, we have the THQ Nordic booth. Now, this one may be the, the booth of the show. Like the one that's more with the most uh, pizzazz, like the most gimmicks. 
and they had like a full-blown wrestling ring here and we're going to be taking a look at a couple of highlights of a wrestling exhibition match that they held here now i'm not too familiar with the uh, with wrestling because oh man it's been since like the late 90s early 2000s since i was since i followed it religiously but um yeah i'm not even sure who these wrestlers are now my goodness but that's kind of cool that they came out to the show and you know it's always fun to see uh um wrestling here i believe this guy's name is the fallen angel look at that with wrestling yeah i i do like the the whole spectacle behind it it's so great to see But anyhow, let's go ahead and uh, enjoy some of these wrestling highlights. Um, if, if wrestling's not your thing, you know, definitely feel free to skip on ahead. I hope to add some chapters here. But for the rest of you, just go ahead and enjoy these highlights. And I have a message for you, Takeshita. I don't know if you're watching this right now, but I want you to know that what I did to Chris Brooks is going to be the same thing that I do to you. It's going to be the same thing that I do to him. Pretty cool to see that. I always like when they get the announcer involved, but it's uh, wrestling is such a spectacle and it's always uh, <laughs> it's always a good time, you know. But like I said, I'm kind of out of the blue with wrestling, but I don't know. Pretty cool to see that. And then we have Destroy All Humans 2. Uh, I'm not sure what the little subtitle there is, but that's a little alien uh, statue there. I wonder what they do with this stuff after the show. I wonder if they give it away or what. And then we have the Alone in the Dark booth. It's kind of rad. And I believe this might be a remake of the original one. That's something that I'm going to have to keep a look out for, uh, keep an eye out for, because I do like uh, these types of games. And then I'm not sure what the deal with this publisher is. I imagine that it's probably just like a mobile, uh, mobile games type of publisher. But they definitely seem to have a big presence at the show. And then here we have the Capcom booth, which I was expecting a little bit more. They're kind of uh, promoting this like uh, Exo, uh, Exo Primal game. Then we have a Mega Man Battle Network, that life-size statue, which is cool looking. We have uh, Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter Rise Icebreaker or something like that. Then Biohazard Village, the VR edition. VR2 edition. And yep, you have to be at least 18 years old to play. <laughs> There's definitely an age check. But look at this. Oh man, this looks pretty cool. Hopefully one day I'm able to uh, experience this. But I believe Gold Edition is going to be uh, third person mode. So that's going to be awesome too. And then here we have Street Fighter 6. Now, 
I was playing a lot of Street Fighter 4. Didn't really touch Street Fighter 5, but um, I don't know if I'll get back into it with 6, but we'll see. I don't know. It could be good. Not that 5 wasn't. It's just that I had other games on the on my, on my, on my plate at the time. And then here's this like e EX... Uh, EXO Primal or EXO Primal. I'm not really sure how you how they're pronouncing that, but they had this little life size, or not life size, but little dinosaur display where you can have your photograph taken, which is kind of neat. But they seem to be heavily uh, pushing this game. And then we have the Namco Bandai section here with some Dragon Ball and of course One Piece. Those are the major licenses, or some of the major licenses for. Uh, Bandai Namco with anything from From Software that they published being the biggest I would say especially now I believe Elden Ring even took like the the top prize at the Japanese Game Awards this year which is much much uh, deserved I freaking love that game and then here's like a little retro booth by Sunsoft they're still alive which was freaking rad to see you got like all their games and look at these TVs oh man What's it going to be, the Sharp with the, VC, uh, with the VCR or the Hitachi there with the S-Video? I'd probably go for the Hitachi unless that Sharp has S-Video. And then we have some arcade PCBs and some posters. Now, a few of these games uh, live on through the arcade uh, archives as well as... Uh, I believe this one is actually on the PlayStation 1 as a part of their collection. And then we have Galaxy Fight, which is definitely on the Hamster uh, arcade archives. And then we have an arcade PCB freaking look at that thing that's straight up hardware porn but it's great to see that th this retro stuff here with the famicom and the super famicom and then we have the sun station pad there in the back which i actually own and then here we have the arcade one-up edition of outrun as well as ridge racer and they have multiple games on these machines this thing would be freaking rad but unfortunately it's not a question of uh that it being out of reach, you know, due to money, but it's more to, uh, for space. I have no space for these things, but I would freaking love one of these. All right, here, and then we have this strictly limited booth. Um, it was it was definitely a, a surprise seeing these guys out there. Actually, a pleasant surprise, mind you. And this is the big game that they're kind of pushing, which is. Um, it's going to show it up on screen. I forget the name, but it's a Cannon Dancer, as you can see. And it's by the same team that developed Strider. So it's some hardcore uh, Strider vibes here. And it's pretty much Strider on acid. And this looks to be actually better, you know, minus the license. But this is available, I believe, up for pre-order. And it's going to be in limited quantities. And I'm, I'm thinking if I can get in there, I might get a copy of this. But it looks freaking rad. I guess it only it saw like a limited arcade release and uh, it was only available in arcades for a limited while before it got pulled or something. I don't know the full story, but but definitely nice to see these guys out here with the, uh, out having a presence at the Tokyo Game Show and all sorts of stuff that are coming out. If they had a, if they had stuff for sale and I was there, I'd probably be all over it. Look at this, Wonder Boy. Aisha and Monster World. And then this section is the indie game section. Oh, I forget the name of this game, but um, this is currently out, at least in Japan, and there is a physical edition um, for the Nintendo Switch. I believe it's also on other platforms. And then we have this Paper Planes by Lost Fairy Interactive, a team out of uh, India. So that's definitely nice to see a little bit of uh, diversity here. And then we have Pocky and Rocky by uh, Natsume Atari. This is probably one of the top games uh, that I've seen in the footage so far. <laughs> no, that's, there's, there's so many games I don't want to take away from these other games. But a lot of interesting stuff here. I do like to see what, what's going on in the indie scene. It's just because there's more, um, more creative freedom here. And then these games kind of prove that, you know, like visual style is, uh, is not something that really goes outdated, right? It could be something in regard to like performance or the clunkiness of control, but like the visual aspects of the, of the games, that's something that's kind of like uh, beyond it looking bad or old and whatnot. It's just uh, a different style. And I guess, I guess some of it could be rooted 
um, deeply within its era, but with these indie games, they're just kind of reviving the, these old uh, pixel-style graphics. And then we have a few other games by this uh, publisher, developer, Chorus World. Chorus Wo Worldwide Games. This is by a different team that seems to have like some Overwatch versus meets Fur Fighters kind of vibes. Definitely interesting this one. And I believe this one is going to be uh, starting off on uh, just like the, the PC. Which the PC is a great platform as it keeps the, the indie scene alive. And a lot of it usually trickles its way down into like uh, PlayStation Network, the eShop, and the Xbox uh, Live. Live Arcade. I'm not sure what they're calling it nowadays. Here's another one that's uh, Valhalla Cats. This is what? Uh, stars, stars in the Trash. But I do like the, the visual style here. This looks freaking awesome. And as you can see, it's going to be coming to Steam. Hopefully this makes its way onto consoles. But that's freaking amazing. Look at that. Looks like a freaking cartoon. And then here we have a few other games. And then this Ninja or Die looks freaking awesome. Very chaotic, definitely something that I would love to play. And I hope, I really do hope, this makes its way onto the Switch, which is my preferred platform for indie type of games. And then we have this Never Awake. Now this one is coming to Switch. And not only is it coming to Switch, it's getting a physical release by, I think in the, in the, in the West it's going to be through limited run games, I believe. And then it's going to have a different publisher um, out in Japan. And look at that, some kind of little shooter. But it, it has like Vanillaware vibes. And then we have Source of Madness. Here's another one that I would like to have seen um, more footage. But from the footage that I received, there's uh, somebody playing and, the, and they're just kind of diving into the menus. And then we have this beauty. Look at this. Man, oh man, this might be the the main booth or, or the, the top prize booth of the show. And then here we're just going to look at some of the swag that, you know, um, that visitors can can buy. This is like, a, looks to be Capcom focused. And this seems to be from Monster Hunter. All sorts of stuff. Monster Hunter is not really my thing, but... Some of this stuff is exclusive to the show. And this, I believe, is the Fan Gamer Show. Look at these plushies. We have uh, Arturias. And then um, a couple characters. Oh, gosh. I'm, I'm drawing a blank here. But then we have a couple characters from the Konami Goemon series and Silent Hill. Those would be freaking rad. And a couple of pins here. Now, if these were magnets, I think they would be a lot better. But I guess if you want to pin these to your to your uh, backpacks or whatnot, that's kind of cool. Look at these Silent Hill ones. Oh, man, I wish I could get some of these. Actually, I don't know if I would actually buy some of these because, oh, uh, yeah, I would get that. Silent Hill for the room, the little door. That's freaking awesome. Uh, what am I talking about? I'm a sucker for these things. If I was there, I'd be picking this up. And look at this. I guess his gun twirls there. Ocelot's gun. And then, oh, this is freaking awesome. The codec and lenticular form. And all sorts of characters here. We have a few characters from Rare. I believe this is, uh, they picked up the Rare license. So th that's why we're seeing more uh, merchandising from those uh, series. Hollow Knight. That's the name of the game. Gosh, and I have it. It's a freaking awesome me uh, Metroidvania style game. But it's been a while since I've played it, and I never actually finished it. I need to get back on it. But yeah, lots of cool stuff here. And then we have uh, some uh, Square Enix soundtracks on vinyl. Oh, man, look at that. You know, vinyl is making a comeback hard. It has made a comeback. What am I talking about? And it's great to see a lot of these gaming soundtracks getting a, a, vinyl, uh, a release on vinyl. There's a few from Capcom that I would like to pick up. Look at that artwork. That's just crazy. Oh, and then this. Final Fantasy 3 slash 6. Look at this thing. This thing looks freaking massive. 
and so detailed. I wonder if this is for sale. Oh man, freaking magic user. Very nicely detailed though, my goodness. Little moguls. You know, back then I wasn't so so much into RPGs, but this is one that I did want to play back in the day. I think I played it a little bit, but I never finished it. And then we have Kingdom Hearts. Uh, this is like a 20th anniversary um, little display here. I've only actually played the first Kingdom Hearts on the PlayStation 2, and that was like way back in the day. I did beat it, and um, I had a great time with it, but I just kind of never continued the series. Maybe that's something I should get on the, on the PS3, the remaster, and kind of, uh, nah, what am I talking about? My backlog is so huge. This ship uh, came and went. This, like, this is looking like a Louis Vuitton uh, luggage piece there. But definitely nice to see this little this little display. All sorts of cool stuff. And then this is like everything that they had for sale at the Square Enix Tokyo uh, game show booth. All sorts of stuff. Definitely feel pre free to pause if you want to see. And then we have the Kojima Productions uh, booth here. Look at all these little figurines. We got these like jumbo nendoroids. Oh man, these things look pretty cool actually. They're probably pricey. But some of this stuff is only available at the show, so it's definitely like... And look at this, the Prime 1 cutie <laughs> of Hideo Kojima. That's freaking hilarious. But all sorts of figurines, look at this stuff. Oh man, I, I still haven't played this. I need to get on it. There's a uh, freaking Death Stranding. I believe it's getting a place. Look at this. The Duke. Oh, man. This one just took the words right out of my mouth. That thing is freaking massive. But all sorts of controllers here. Man, look at this. Look at this stuff. I wonder if this stuff was for sale or it was just uh, up on display. But, but yeah, all sorts of controllers. Now, I recently released the shorts where I kind of looking through, like, the junk bin controllers at Hard Off and... There's a lot of wacky stuff, but some of these, these look freaking awesome. But still, you don't really know until you have it in your hands, you know what I'm saying? Although I have to say, this white one is pretty cool. But anyhow, this was just like a, I guess like a preview of the show of what you would expect if you were here. And anyhow, that's going to be it for this episode. My name is JJ, and I hope to see you all very soon. Ciao.